Hello, my name's Mark Wood, and I'd like to talk about the how and why of hardware calibration using a BenQ color critical monitor. I think it's really important that when I'm processing my photographs, what I'm seeing on screen accurately represents the tones and colors of the photograph I'm enhancing. This can mean different things. When it comes to product photography and interiors, I want to ensure that the colors I've recorded from the scene, in this case, an interior, so the wallpaper, the sofa and the cushions, the colors that are present here, I can accurately map all the way from the scene through to output, whether that's on another screen or in print. Though often, for me, color management is about having a calibrated display so I can stylize color knowing that the stylization will accurately be represented in print or on another display. Quite often when I'm talking about color management, I'll use black and white samples, monochrome images. In the case of the guitar player here, you're seeing a guy wearing a black t-shirt, black shirt, black leather jacket. Quite easily, these tones could become mashed together into a flat black area. When the monitor is tuned properly, you can tease out subtle tones, whether they're shadow areas or highlights, knowing that what you're seeing on screen accurately represents the tonality of the digital image. To explain that further, I'll show you this photograph here, which is stripped into three bands. To help you see that, I'll just draw up some lines. The top third may look to you slightly washed out, but it may be hard to differentiate between the tones in the middle section and the bottom one. On my BenQ display, the bottom third accurately represents what I'm looking for, a slightly warm image, lots of rich tone and very strong full blacks. And the middle section is slightly washed out. But the difference between the two is quite subtle. By hardware calibrating my display, I can be sure, very sure of what I'm seeing on screen. And that's why I hardware calibrate. So that was some of the whys of hardware calibration and profiling. Now I'm going to show you how to do that. I've attached my i1 Display Pro Calibrator to my BenQ monitor. You can see that uh, on screen here, there's a little green tick showing that the display calibrator is in place. And if this is the first time you're going to do the profiling and hardware calibration, I suggest using the basic mode. Just so you get from the beginning to the end of the process and just check out everything's working okay before trying a second time in the advanced mode, which I'll choose here. I'll now click start. I wish to profile the display. So I've done that, it's now selected and I'll click next. And the Palette Master Element software shows some options. I can choose from Photographer, Web Designer, Graphics, Cinema, Video Editing. I'm going to leave it on Photographer where the primaries are set to Adobe RGB. And the white point D65, these are totally appropriate for nearly all photography. So primaries left to Adobe RGB here. And then what I might do is change the luminance. In normal office conditions, having a luminance set to 160 is okay. But I like to work in subdued lighting, so I'm going to dial down the luminance to 120 candelas per square metre. I'll just press the tab key to move on. Gamma being set to 2.2 is okay, and I'll leave the black point on absolute zero. Then click next. The Palette Master Element software allows you to have up to three calibration settings, perhaps one for web work, so that would be sRGB. Wedding photographers might choose that route, and you might be a video editor, so you could set this up for Rec 709 as well. The software gives a default profile name. I'm not going to change that. 
and I'm going to add the profile I'm about to make to the system level of the computer. There's no reason for me to swap from the latest profile version, version 4 to version 2. But what I will do is change the profile type to a 16-bit lookup table. But for the purposes of this video, I won't choose the large patch set, which should give a more accurate profile. I'll just, I'll just leave it on the small one for this. And now click Start Measurement. The software shows you what to do with your calibrator. So I've got that configured, just turning that around now. My display is slightly angled backwards so that I can place the calibrator on the screen. So I'll click continue. And the software shows me where to place the calibrator on the display. With the angle of the monitor back slightly, the calibrator sits neatly on the display. So I'll now click continue. And now the measuring process begins. The software projects onto the display a series of tones and colors. And the calibrator reads those. If there's any discrepancy between the color being projected and the color red, the hardware calibration will ease that out and make the monitor tuned up and do that accurately. As this process takes a while, I'll speed up the video here. Now that the calibration is complete, you can choose to validate the calibration. This process is much quicker than the calibration process, so the software will be done shortly. Validation is important. During calibration, you may have inadvertently knocked your monitor, moving the calibration device, which will create an inaccurate profile. Anyway, this is passed, so I'm going to move on. You may notice I'm using a Mac, so I'm going to go to the System Preferences. And inside Displays, I'm going to check the color options for the BenQ SW271 I'm using, and there we have the profile just made. I hope you found that video useful. For more detailed information on the settings, please check out my pro tips for using BenQ color critical displays.